Hello everybody, my name is Ratnos, and in today's video we are going to talk about the Maw. The Maw is something that a lot of people have questions about how to min-max here, how to optimize, uh, and there are some truly degenerate strategies you can use if you're trying to get every little last bit out of the Maw, but even if you're not, there are a couple of ways that you can find things that will really improve your life in here. So. Uh, there's something, there should be something for everybody in this video, regardless of what your lifestyle is like in the Maw. Uh, so for starters, a lot of people ask, what do you actually get out of the Maw? And the main thing you can do in the Maw is every day you can fill up your eye of the jailer bar. I have a weak aura here as well that, that turns it into numbers instead of just this graphic. Uh, I'll link that in the description below. And every action that fills up your eye of the jailer bar will also generally give you some Stygia and or rep. For instance, killing any little mob will give you six Eye of the Jailer, uh, and each each level takes a thousand points to fill it all the way up. Uh, so you have five thousand total to spend each day uh, before you then get that the Eye of the Jailer debuff that basically forces you out of here. And they give you a little bit of Stygia, right? Little mobs give you a little bit of Stygia, no rep. Pretty bad if you're somebody who's looking for rep, though. And why would you wa want to be looking for rep? Well, once you can get to some rep breakpoints, for instance, I hit tentative uh, yesterday, actually. Uh, maybe two days ago by the time I get this video out, uh, then you'll unlock more areas of the Maw. So for instance, I can now go to Perdition Hold, and soon when you get even more rep, you'll be able to go to other parts of the Maw, like there's two more little zones out here. Uh, rep also lets you buy new upgrades from Venari. There's permanent upgrades that'll make your life easier in both the Maw and in Torghast, and the Torghast ones are actually account-wide, the Maw ones aren't. Uh, for instance, I have access to these grapple points now, uh, and I don't get the debuff from the assassins attacking me anymore uh, that causes you to gain even more Eye of the Jailer. So there's good stuff you can get from rep. The primary strategy for super high min maxi stuff is to rush that rep as much as you can because it does open up the extra areas of the Maw, and that'll let you get even more rep. Uh, and the rep will eventually allow you to buy random conduits you don't own uh, or slash upgrade the item level of your lowest item levels. And sockets. Sockets will eventually be coming from uh, both rep and Stygia. Both rep and Stygia are required for both of those things, but rep turns out to be the more gated resource, the resource you're more interested in min-maxing. Uh, so, let's talk a little bit about different ways that you can play in the Maw. First of all, you might notice my map has a bunch of uh, things on it. This is from the add-on handy notes, and it's really nice for figuring out where stuff is. Um, the basic idea is that not all things in the Maw are actually created equal in terms of the ratio of Eye of the Jailer and uh, Stygia slash Rep they give. This is not going to matter for a lot of players. A lot of players just zone into the Maw, so there's kind of like level zero Maw playing, where you, you go into the Maw maybe even only once or twice per week, and you swing by these blue exclamation points, you do them, you go out with Eye of the Jailer rank two or three or whatever, and you're happy with your your day. That is totally fine if you if you like playing the Maw like that. That's, that's awesome, that's fine. I'd say level like one maw farming is maybe you do a full swoop of the zones that you have. You know, you do a circle around and you go kill anything that you can kill. Uh, and you don't kill any of the hard elites or anything. Some of the elites that require you to have like four people to spawn them, like the convocations. Uh, and you don't do any of them. And that's fine as well. You're going to get a little bit more than the level zero players. Then there's the min-maxing level. I'd say there's level two maw farming is... If you actually want to min-max for the mobs that give good ratios of Eye of the Jailer to rep, right? You want to, you want to get as much rep per Eye of the Jailer gained as possible. Um, so, for instance, the little mobs, like the Soulsmith Yolmatars, the, these things that you can basically solo, they give 40 rep and 300 Eye of the Jailer, which is not a great ratio compared to the big mobs, which also give 300 Eye of the Jailer, but give 80 rep. They give twice as much rep per Eye of the Jailer as the little mobs. But... They are also a lot harder to kill. Actually, I'm not even sure if Borgath is. Borgath might even be even more than that. But like the the convocations, for instance, are good ones that are, are ones that give 80 rep and uh, cost 300 eye of the jailer. So you're getting a better deal on those ones, but you need a group to kill them. Usually, you can't just run around and kill them yourself. Uh, so level two maw farming, I'd say, is usually done in a group, and you're going around in circles looking for the most efficient ones uh, of that. List. I'll have a, a in the description below. I'll have a little graph that helps you see the different ratios from each of the different activities as well, uh, so you can look at that. But the basic idea is that the the small ones, these Soulsmith Yolmatars, the Odal Ricks, uh, you know, the the easy guys to find over here, the Malevolent Stygia, the Dartanos, uh, those are ones that are less good than the harder ones to kill. You know, the the Heralds and the the big elites. Um, 
Now, can you go even further? Yes, you can. So let's talk a little bit about some of the most degenerate stuff you can do in here. First of all, one thing you can do is you can make sure that you get a big hit of Eye of the Jailer to take you from almost at level 5 to all the way to level 5, right? Uh, because, you know, if, you, if you're at 999 out of 1,000 for that last bump up to rank 5 Eye of the Jailer, it doesn't matter whether you kill one little mob or a mob that gives you 300 Eye of the Jailer. Either way, you're going to be capped and you're going to get re rewards. So... As you start getting close to the uh, the eye of the jailer cap, you then you know find find little activities you can do that will get you almost up there, and then a big activity you can do that will way over cap you, but you don't care about that. So that's a little optimization you can do at this level. You're making sure to not do anything that has a bad ratio of rep to eye of the jailer. So this would be stuff like never killing random mobs that you run into if you can avoid it, because random mobs give you six eye of the jailer and zero rep, right? Uh, so that's a, a, you know, an infinitely bad ratio of those two things to each other. It's not the end of the world because it's such a small amount, right? Six out of a thousand uh, is such a small amount. Six out of your 5,000 total that you have of the day to give of Eye of the Jailer. But uh, it's still better to avoid them if you can. Then the final level of min-max, the level three turbo, turbo min-max maw strategy. Uh, you can see players like THD doing this uh, and you earn quite a bit of extra rep by doing this is at rank 5 I, the Jailer, you are no longer eligible for uh, Stygia or Reputation rewards from killing mobs. But you can still get it from doing quests. And it doesn't actually kill you that fast, the rank 5 I, the Jailer. And you can either log out and log back in, or go to Torghast and come back, and you'll reset down to one stack of that buff, and it needs to get to 10 before it starts killing you. Um, so what you can do is you can actually do these two quests, after you hit rank 5 I, the Jailer, and still get the benefits uh, of the rep and Stygia rewards from them. So you can get even more at rank 5, rather, because they normally will reward you with, or will penalize you with a bunch of I, the Jailer, when you complete them. But, and not just when you turn them in, but when you actually complete the objectives for them. But, you can save that until after you're already at rank 5 and it doesn't matter anymore. This is a little dangerous, of course, not everybody is having a good time at rank 5 I, the Jailer, in the Maw. But, you can actually live it fairly easily. Um... You, can, you know, you, you just have, uh, it, do, it doesn't stop you from getting Absorb Shields, even though it's a healing reduction. It doesn't stop you from eating, as long as you do have an Absorb Shield. And it doesn't stop your passive regen from healing you. It will out-damage your passive regen, but uh, only, it, it's not going to kill you super duper duper fast, generally, if you're out of combat. Uh, so there are ways to survive in the Maw with the rank 5 Eye of the Jailer for quite a while. Uh, and THD, I think, did it for like 20 minutes uh, yesterday when I'm, as of time I'm recording this video and got his two quests done. So if you're interested in super turbo min-maxing, that's a, a way to do it. I'm not doing that. I, I'm just doing the like run around and like if I can, if I have the option, I'll try and do the more efficient ones compared to the less efficient ones. Uh, that's kind of the big the big takeaway I, had, I have from this is like this Borgeth guy, for instance, that spawns here is really good. It, it's really nice to kill him. Uh, and, you know, killing these these two... Sometimes I'll do it because I just want to get my Eye of the Jailer filled up and be done with the Maw for the day, uh, but they are less efficient than the other stuff you can be doing in the Maw. So uh, that's that's kind of the different min-maxi strategies at, at, in the Maw. You can be looking at, I would say, maybe 30-40% to 40 more rep per day from that like level 3 turbo min-max as compared to like level 2, uh, where you're just kind of going around, or, or level 1 even, where you just go around and fill up your Eye all the way. Uh, and as long as you're doing that, you're you're doing totally fine in here, and there's really not a huge need. There's maybe a chance that you're going to be able to get, like, a socket a couple weeks earlier by doing it that way, and that might be relevant for uh, World First Progression or something, but at the end of the day, most folks are going to end up getting about the same stuff out of the mod about the same time. It's not something to worry about too much. Now, let me share a couple of quick tips for traversing the maw. Um, so, of course, there are the upgrades you can get from Venari that'll give you these grapple points, and there are ones that'll give you little random teleporters that teleport you to... Uh, a different place every day in the Maw, which is kind of cool. They're, they, you know, they're, they're like a network of teleporters, and they each link to different of each other every day, which is, is very cool. But there are also some toys and consumables that'll be very useful for you here if you're not a druid. And I know there's already several of you druids in, in the comment section who haven't watched the whole video and have already uh, started talking about how easy it is to travel around the Maw if you're a druid, and I get it. Uh, but if you're not a druid... You definitely want to get some Goblin Glider Kits. Goblin Glider Kits can help you traverse great distances. You just go up to the nearest 
high point. Even if you are a druid, I use this on my druid when I'm in the maw too. Uh, you go up to a nearest high point and then you, you fire off the uh, the glider. Another thing is these outriders. These outriders that run around on their little mounts. If you kill off one of these guys, they will drop their mount for you to use and for any number of players to use. And it lasts for a minute. So you can use this to very quickly uh, get to wherever you want to go in the maw. Uh, and that, that really does speed up the movement uh, around the place. The final tip I have is actually a toy you can get from Borgath, who you should be killing anyways if you can. Uh, Borgath, you know, he's a big elite. You can find a group for him sometimes. Sometimes you go in here and you type Bor. You can get a group for him. I've gotten that last two times I tried, but there's not one right now. You will need to, like, phase out to Torghast and phase back in before you switch phases in the maw. It's really weird. Uh, but that's them's the rules for, for how Borgath works. Borgath also drops a toy sometimes. Borgath's Fiery Brimstone, and this thing is really useful. Let me show you what this does. It... Pops you up into the air, does a little bit of damage to you, and then you can get enough altitude to get a nice glide up somewhere. Uh, and so that can really help you. I'm going to just kill this stupid thing. I, I don't care. I don't care that it's inefficient. Uh, but let me show you Let me show you just how this how this weaker actually looks when it fills up with Eye of the Jailer. That's what I'm doing. I'm doing a useful thing for the for the purposes of this video. Um, <laughs> anyways, if you want that weaker, if you want the... Um, all the, the stuff I'm talking about. I think there's going to be a Wowhead article if there isn't already soon as well. So I'll, I'll link all the stuff you might need uh, from this video, the Handy Notes add-on as well. Uh, very good little way to see everything on your map. Remember, a, another little tip is if you find a hard elite to kill and you're not in a group, you can usually just control-click that thing, put down a marker, open up general chat and shift-click it, and a bunch of people will show up in a couple minutes, or a couple seconds even sometimes. Uh, so that's a that's a way usually to get those hard, hard mobs done. Anyways... Uh, that's my little video on the Maw, on some min-max strategies for it. I'm by no means an expert at this. I mostly just fill up my Eye of the Jailer every day. Uh, but I'm aware of some of these <laughs> these strategies and uh, figured I'd share them with you just in case you want to punish yourself and uh, spend two and a half hours in the Maw every day. Anyways, hope this video helped. Uh, check out my Twitch stream, twitch.tv slash ratnose. Thanks everybody for watching. I will see you in the next one. Okay, all right, last bit, I promise. I, I forgot something to mention earlier. Uh, this Wrath of the Jailer thing, it's a weekly event that you can get a lot of a lot of rewards from, including some high item level stuff, and including a legendary if you're a druid. But you can only get rewards from it once per week, which is really weird. It's really weird, so... Uh, <laughs> it's You kind of have to keep track on each of your characters. It's not too bad if you just got one character, whether you've done Wrath of the Jailer or not, but if you're a multi-character person, I don't know, hopefully there's some add-ons soon that'll let you easily track whether you've done your Wrath of the Jailer, otherwise it's just going in the spreadsheet. Anyways, uh, real end of the video now. Bye.